Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another very important online tournament. And yes, this is another important online tournament, but this time it's organized by FIDE itself. So it's FIDE Chess Olympiad 2020 and 163 teams are involved. So 163 countries uh, set up their teams and they play online. A very beautiful idea. And uh, we have five divisions, so all of these uh, teams are divided into five divisions. We have the basic division where you know some of the teams some of the countries has the average ranking believe me or not but around uh, 1100 1200 so uh, th that's pretty interesting and of course top division where we have 24 2500 average uh, rankings and uh, in the top division I would like to show you the standing so top 40 uh, teams are divided into four pools. Uh, so each pool has 10 teams. And in pool A, we have India who won against China. The internet, you know, was full of information. Uh, Indian uh, people definitely can make a lot of noise about their success. Um, so India was first, then China and Germany on the third spot. And in pool B, Azerbaijan won just uh, before Hungary and Ukraine. Everything was open to the last round. Then we had the Pool C, Russia won uh, pretty easily, Bulgaria and Armenia uh, second and the third place and also USA should win very easily in Pool D, however Greece and Poland uh, got, you know, uh, very very close. So uh, India, Azerbaijan, Russia and USA get to the knocked out phase to the quarter quarterfinals. Uh, other teams still have to play in the playoffs and I would like to show you the game between uh, Wesley So who's gonna play as black in this game and Jan Krzysztof Duda. So this is first board and Jan Krzysztof Duda as always or mostly he opens with c4. We have knight f6, English opening, knight f3, we have e6, g3, d5. So Neo-Catalan in the English opening, that's the name of the, of the line if you are interested. Uh, we have exchange in the center and now bishop g2 preparing to castle and now bishop d6 so uh, Wesley so also want to prepare for the castle b3 now bringing uh, another bishop also to the long diagonal Jan Krzysztof Duda likes to do that very often this is one of his uh, you know ideas how to continue the game in the English opening. Uh, we have castle by Wesley, so bishop b2, uh, rook e8, and now castle by Duda. Uh, c6, so solidifying this, this pawn structure, and now d3. Uh, so as you see, Jan Krzysztof Duda doesn't fight for the center with the pawns. He creates this, um, you know, dragon pawn structure, uh, similar to the dragon uh, in, the, in the Sicilian defense, but he usually plays that as as white so we had a lot of games you know in this system and now uh, what is the idea of Wesley so how to fight against that we have bishop g4 and now knight b to d2 knight b to d7 and now rook e1 the idea is 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 pretty pretty straight e4 you know play e4 maybe prepare it with with queen to c2 um, and you know strike in the center uh, and then once the pawn on is e4, uh, then for example f4 can be played, then e5 and so on. So uh, he played that in the in this pawn structure uh, pretty often. Uh, and now how black usually responds in this in this opening? It was played not many times. We have only four games in the database. Uh, black can, for example, attack you know on the on the queen side, but this is, this is pretty slow stuff. Uh, queen c7 connecting the rooks, bring the rook to the center. This is also possible, uh, or immediately may maybe jump to e5 with the knight and try to you know exchange the knights but wesley so has a, a different idea and he played bishop f3 so he gives up the pair of bishop but now look at this after knight f3 uh, this knight doesn't support e4 anymore so it's more difficult to play moreover we have bishop b4 attacking the rook and now what to do go back with the with the knight it's, it doesn't look good so rook f1 by Jan Krzysztof Duda 
and now bishop d6. So as you see, e4 is not so easy to play. Uh, queen c2 just to support that move and now we have queen e7. So uh, Wesley so doesn't like it as well. Keep an eye on the on e4, but also he wants to exchange the dark square bishops, which is even more important. So queen e7, and this is the idea. Uh, now, how to play against that? Jan Krzysztof Duda played knight d4 with the idea of jumping with the knight to f5 and, you know, win this bishop and then he can play with the pair of bishops against pair of knights. That could be very interesting. However, Wesley so is not interested. Bishop a3 as planned and he wants to exchange uh, the bishops. We have knight f5 as planned attacking the queen, queen f8 and now finally uh, exchange the bishops as the bishop, you know, uh, doesn't have good squares here. So just exchange the bishops. We have queen a3 and now finally e4 is possible. And it's quite tricky now. We have queen c5 uh, asking to exchange the queens and Duda avoids that. So he play queen b2, which is pretty tricky because it looks now that this pawn is under attack and can be, you know, attacked three times, which is true. We have d takes on e4, d takes on d4. The point is knight on e4 cannot be played. I hope you see that already. There is a checkmate on g7, so pretty tricky. So first Wesley so want to kick the knight. We have um, g6 and now the knight can go, you know, very easily to, for example, e3 and then black can pick up the, the pawn. So uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda has different idea here. Knight h6 and now if king g7 then knight can go for example to g4 as then this knight is actually pinned. So uh, we have king f8, not really the greatest square for the, for the king. Uh, and now rook a to d1. So uh, controlling the open file and cutting the way for the king, if the king want to, for example, escape this way. Uh, but now we have queen h5 trapping the knight and what to play next as white. You cannot defend the knight because king g7 and you're gonna lose the knight. The knight has nowhere to go. Uh, all of the squares are, of, of course, um, controlled by black. Uh, something like e5 attacking another another piece that doesn't work uh, simply rook e5 uh, and the rook is of course defended so there are no tricks here so uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda decided to give up the exchange we have rook d7 knight to d7 and now queen h8 and it looks pretty scary. We have king e7 and now uh, queen h7 was possible. However, Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't want black to give the opportunity uh, of bring the connected rooks to the h8 and then, you know, play together with the queen, maybe with some mating idea. So, uh, you know, just queen g7. Don't take the, the pawn yet. We have rook f8 defending the, the f7 and now f4. So finally moves f4 and uh, then of course e5 is coming and so on. And now what to do with this king in the center? It looks pretty pretty ugly. We have rook a to e8 making a space for the king. So artificial castling by black and also the rooks already control the center. And now we have e5 by Jan Krzysztof Duda. Firstly, a controlling f6. So, so for example, the knight cannot jump to g4 uh, and deliver a checkmate, one of the ideas. Opening the diagonal for the bishop as well. Um, and also creating very interesting, very strong outpost for the knight, maybe for the queen in the future. Uh, we have queen e2 by uh, Wesley So, so he brings the queen closer to the to the king, which looks pretty uh, pretty dangerous. However, other pieces, how to activate the other pieces? Uh, we have rook f2 now defending also a2 and now queen e1 with check. We have bishop f1. So uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda creates the shelter for his king, uh, and now. Uh, Wesley so could try something like you know queen e3 uh, and maybe if if the queen takes the takes the pawn for free maybe bring the knight 
to c5 maybe bring to to e5 and continue the game it looks like pretty sharp uh but of course king g2 is possible and for example queen e4 uh, and this could probably end in a draw so so this is pretty possible to you know just get the threefold repetition but wesley so uh plays for the win so king d8 so he hide his king and now he want to bring more pieces to the attack on the position of the king uh, but this of course is very costly as this pawn is without protection now only the rook of course defend so we have knight f7 with check and now king c7 so king is very safe there maybe not very safe but much safer than it was uh, and now it looks like okay this is a beautiful outpost for the knight now if you go immediately that is the problem and i hope you see that so uh, you can you can you know pause the video and find the way how to punish that move uh, rook e5 is uh, extremely dangerous because it wins the pawn now the knight is in the troubles f takes on e5 of course cannot be played because that would be the checkmate so first Duda of course has to prepare that move and he played rook e2. We have queen d1 and now knight d6. So finally very beautiful outpost. However, uh, Wesley saw, okay, this is too beautiful. I'm gonna, you know, now give back the exchange and win this dangerous pawn. This is past pawn and it's protected past pawn with this beautiful monster knight so it's too much all it's this too much so we have rook e5 of course f takes on e5 that would be the checkmate on f1 so uh, rook e5 and now queen d6 so the material is equal uh, and now the game gonna be even sharper uh, queen h7 Duda says okay the material is not equal anymore and now queen d4 with check king g2 and now how to continue as black it looks like the best move in the position could be king b6 and then let's say after rook e7 this is the main uh, idea here uh, probably something like queen d5 and again black can get the draw for example after king f2 queen c5 uh, king f3 the point is that black cannot really activate the pieces um let's say queen d5 king e3 so uh the best idea for black would be just bring the knight to c5 with the check if the king is for example on d3 uh, and then maybe later even bring the rook maybe with check as well but it's not so easy queen c5 and now the knight cannot jump there uh, king d3 so as you see it's not that easy queen f5 then king e3 and so on so it's not so easy and also if black tries to you know activate for example with c5 there is always b4 move uh, which gonna kick the knight and then the rook gonna take uh, b7 so what wesley so found is actually queen d2 now queen d2 is with check and also uh it protects b4 so the knight in the future can come to c5 and it cannot be kicked from there so this is the idea we have bishop e2 blocking and now how to continue the game so king b6 definitely is the main idea uh, of wesley so uh, but first he wanted to open the file for the rook so uh, if the rook can be operational here uh, then why not this is why we have g5 uh trying to you know uh, just shatter a bit of the position and Jan Krzysztof Duda took the pawn um, and only now we have king b6 by Wesley so rook e7 and now knight c5 as planned so the knight defends b7 and also it cannot be harassed and it's on the dark square so it cannot be harassed uh we have queen g7 now harassing the the rook uh, and also preparing to very interesting maneuver rook is under attack so rook f5 attacking the pawn on g5 twice uh young Krzysztof duda want to save it so we have g6 and now how to continue wesley so actually found very interesting maneuver as you see uh, his pieces are quite operational however the position is very very sharp uh, also you know the bishop is pointing over there um, there is the battery on b7 so position is extremely sharp uh, however we have queen d5 with check king h3 and now rook f2 
So the idea is very simple. Uh, queen g2 checking and also picking up the bishop. Double attack here. Uh, but Jan Krzysztof Duda has a very interesting answer here. So maybe it's time to pause the video and find the strongest continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So you could play something like b4, but this is not enough to win. Uh, the position is very sharp. A lot of tactics. So for example, in this case, rook e2 saves the game for black uh, because after b takes on c5, king c5, rook e2, there is the tactic, you know, winning back that rook. So king g2, and that would be probably threefold repetition. So that would be the draw. However, uh, imagine that you can, uh, you know, replace the switch the position of the queen and the rook so the queen is on e7 and then this battery would work as a charm this would be the idea that is the checkmate actually because the bishop controls the the light square around the king now how to do that because definitely the queen comes to to g2 uh gonna you know win this bishop but how to do it fast so young Krzysztof duda found a way and he played queen e5 queen e5 and the idea is very simple this is the checkmate what a move very beautiful move and now of course if black exchanged the queens um then we would have rook e5 uh, and now this pawn gonna win the game. If black want to stop it, then g7, uh, rook g8, and now rook e7. The bishop gonna come to c4, uh, win the rook and the game. So probably knight e6 is the is forced. Uh, but white gonna have, you know, extra bishop, so that's winning. So uh, Wesley so tries different way, and he played queen g2 with check, and now he says, okay, uh, I have the plan king g4 and now knight d7 saying okay i'm blocking i'm blocking your battery and now if you take the knight then i'm gonna take your bishop how about that uh young krzysztof duda said okay let's see who calculate more precisely we have rook d7 and of course rook e2 and now queen c7 how about that and now where to go with the king actually it doesn't really matter we had king c5 we have queen a5 with check and as you see there are no legal moves with the king all of the squares are controlled with the rook with the queen so we have b5 by wesley so uh, but after queen a3 he resigned so young Krzysztof Duda won on the first board against Wesley. So beautiful game. Now uh, he resigned, of course, because we're going to have a checkmate. Uh, if we have b4, then queen a5, this is a checkmate. Um, and if we have uh, king to b4, b6, then we also have queen a7 and checkmate. And Poland won against uh, USA. So this is why uh, Poland has 13 points. USA, that was the first loss. Uh, first six rounds, USA won very pretty easily. And then there's something strange happened because there was another uh, draw against Peru. And Peru did pretty well. For some reason, Daisy Corey, who made, you know, a lot of points, six out of seven points, she didn't play in the last two games, so uh, Peru actually could win against USA uh, and also uh, against Argentina, but uh, couldn't win against Argentina without Daisy Corey and Peru didn't get to the playoffs. So uh, I hope you like this. I hope you enjoyed. Leave the comment if you would like me to cover more games from this uh, FIDE Chess Olympiad. There are big names over there, a lot of interesting games there. Uh, so I'm interested if, if I should follow a couple of games maybe. And, uh, and yeah, press like if you like this video, press and like if for some reason you don't like it. And if you like my style of commenting, uh, then press subscribe, smash the the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one